Greetings for one, it's T2 again, and I have just had my mind blown a little bit. I just watched uh, Lock and Key on Netflix. Season 3 is fucking balling. <laughs> and I've been doing some research on my new obsession, which is books. I mean, I've always liked books. I always thought, like, I'm probably one of the nerdiest people in my area. <laughs> Maybe in the state. But apparently, I'm not even fucking close, because I discovered this thing called BookTube and Book Talk. There's a tick. This is a book version of TikTok. It's like people that are like super into books to a degree that I did not know was possible. I thought I was like obsessed with books. There's people. When I got on Goodreads.com, I made an account and I was looking at some of the top people on there. And they had like, uh, you can set goals, right? Some of them are like, 300 books for the year. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm reading like a book every one to two days. Constantly. So then I discovered these people on BookTube. One of them is a guy named Daniel Green. He's an author. He's wrote a couple of books himself. And uh, there's all these, I've been watching bookshelf reviews of like, he goes through and judges other people's bookshelves, including other authors. And there's like, they have like a Jeopardy. They play Jeopardy. There's like trivia. He's like a fantasy guy. I don't know where to even start with this. I started talking about Lock and Key. I'm getting into so many tangents. First, let me talk about my history. I don't know if I want to call this video like, am I a booktuber? Because I might be a booktuber myself since I have T2's book club. But I'm not like these guys. Um... What I always think of fantasy, I always thought like your Dragonlance, your Ravenloft, your Forgotten Realms, your Dungeons and Dragons universe. That's that's most of your fantasy. And then you got like J.R.R. Tolkien, maybe you got some George R.R. R. Martin, and that's pretty much all the fantasy existed of consisted of. I mean, I know there's like these people like Piers or uh, is Piers Anthony? Is that a Anne McCaffrey, I know, was one. And there's this other guy. The Dragons of Perth, that kind of thing. I, I, like, old people that you don't really read that much anymore. But there's this whole, like, new wave of fantasy that I did not know existed. Until a while back, last year, year before last, was playing Path of Exile. Uh, with these guys that I kind of quit the guild, but... Um, this guy mustache on there was talking about... Um, Somebody made like this fake bookshelf where he took the spines of books, took images of them, and he had like all these books he'd read this year, and they're like, this is pretty cool. Maybe I could make an app like that or something, right? And he's got all these like Brandon Sanderson books. So that's how I learned about Brandon Sanderson. So you've probably heard of the Wheel of Time. If you're not a book reader, Wheel of Time is like this epic series. Let me find you a picture of it because it's. They got like different covers. I like the way people like set up their your bookshelves with this but um, this is what the set looks like two three four that's like 15 16 books there that's like a thousand dollar set of books by the way um, so Robert Jordan wrote most of these and then he died and then his wife picked Brandon Sanderson to finish it because he was a huge Robert Jordan fan and influenced by him and stuff. I've just learned that today. So I didn't know Brandon Sanderson finished this series for him. So they're talking about even like George R. R. Martin's Winds of Winter that he hasn't put out in like, was it been 10 years or something? That Brandon Sanderson could maybe finish that for him even though he's still alive. He's just fucking lazy. Or he's like, yeah, I think his problem is when they made the TV show that last two seasons, he's realizing there's all these problems like the undead dragging this giant chain up and down hills and pulling a dragon skeleton out of the lake. Like, that don't make no sense. The plot armor with the last fight and Arya just one shot and the guy with the dagger to the back. I think he's realizing that none of that makes sense. There's a lot of, like, holes in it. Plus, it doesn't even match up to the last book that I read of Game of Thrones. So I think that's why Martin is having trouble finishing it. But, um... So yeah, you got the Wheel of Time, and then you've also got, um, uh, well, the Silmarillion and all the other Tolkien books, but there was, like, uh, what's the other, you got all the Sanderson's, Sanderson has this whole Cosmere thing, which I don't know hardly anything about it, but everybody in the brother talks about it. I tried reading Mistborn, 
It was super boring in the beginning. And everybody says he's like a super world buildy guy. He spends a lot of time world building, but then it gets crazy. And it's like about some people like ingesting metal and they get superpowers from it or something. And I think there's like the Mistborn is like one kind of time period, and then there's like a fantasy time period, and then there's like a star, like a sci fi time period, but it's all in the same universe. Or something like that. I don't fucking know. But. I usually don't like books that have a lot of weird fantasy type names and new places you gotta learn. I mean, that's what I liked about Game of Thrones. It's like the names were close to normal names, but then they were just like a little spelling, a little different. And you got that map. I mean, everything gives you a map, but if you watch the TV show first, I feel like it's also easier to get into the books because then you know kind of what's going on. So I'm gonna watch the Wheel of Time TV show. Maybe I'll get me into the Robert Jordan books. But, what else was there? So, Brandon Sanderson apparently is so prolific. Let me get you a picture of his... Uh, this is a picture of the Cosmere. This is like the white version on top is when two books were split into like part one, part two. And then the bottom one is like they're put into one big book. And he's got like leather bound editions. He's got the Mistborn here. He's got this Well of Ascension stuff or whatever. What is, it, what is it called? The Way of Kings stuff. That's like the fantasy one, I think. And then this is the sci-fi one. So, check this out. This blew my mind a little bit. Uh, oh, this is just some booktubers. This girl, Murphy Napier, she's cool. Um, they had a book that I was looking for. I think it was like Joe or Joel Abernathy. But I looked them up and there was a different person. I'm trying to figure out what it was called. Uh, yeah, that's that Daniel Green guy I was talking about. Anyway, Brandon Sanderson. That's him right there. He seems a little bit like... I don't know if he's gay, but he sounds a little bit gay. And a little bit pretentious. Because he's talking about this video. He's kind of bragging. And he's talking about being a showman. And he says, Oh, I've been lying to you all. When I said I was taking a break, I was actually... Writing five more fucking books. <laughs> he brings out these manuscripts. So apparently 2023 he's going to call the year of Sanderson. Where normally if he puts out like three or four books a year. He's going to have five extra ones on top of it. And like if you subscribe. You got like the subscription based Kickstarter or something. And you like get a secret book every month or two. The ones that he just wrote. <laughs> so if you're into Brandon Sanderson that's going to be crazy. But, uh, I wanted to talk about Lock and Key because this is what else blew my fucking mind, right? So I'm watching the show. Here's all the keys they got in the show, right? By the way, the comic book for Lock and Key is written by Stephen King's son, Joe Hill. He changed his name so it'd be separate from Stephen King. Which I was getting confused with Owen King, which is his brother. So Stephen King has two... Sons that are both authors. So Owen King wrote Sleeping Beauties with Stephen King. Joe Hill wrote Lock and Key and a bunch of other shit. <laughs> so he's got his own like Stephen King's fucking badass. He's like putting out people that write books. He's so prolific. I mean, I guess he is better than Dean Koontz now that I think about it. So that blew my mind. And then you guys remember a while back. I reviewed a TV I mean like a years ago a while back when was this this show came out called The Room there was three episodes of The Room and it was just like Lock and Key how it gives you like a lot of these objects that do special things and it like gives you these tools to create all an infinite number of stories like there was this guy he had like this comb, he combed his hair and it would teleport him to Gallup, New Mexico. <laughs> and then there was this bus pass. Was it the bus pass that did it? Yeah, the comb made you like super fast. You could like dart around and like get around people. But the Gallup, New Mexico bus ticket would teleport you to Gallup, New Mexico. You'd kind of fall like 10 feet out of the sky and <laughs> land on your ass. And there was like this eyeball. There was like the occupant of the room himself was like something happened in this motel room that shot everything out of it and gave it special powers and just flew across the world and people that knew about it were collecting them but that's super amazing how 
if you want to write a good story, do something like this, where you just have a bunch of things that do a lot of different things, and then it's like your whole fucking toolbox to do whatever you want. You can make all kinds of crazy shit happen. So, Lock and Key is like that, but the characters are kind of stupid because they don't use things. Like, there's this, they just discovered this one that's like a, um, a time travel key. But it's limited, which makes it cool also, because it only works, like, in the grandfather clock or whatever that's in the house. They got the key house, and usually the keys all relate to something in the house. Like, there's an object, that, like the jewelry box, or this, one of them's called the Harlequin Quest key, which is this one. It's like a treasure chest. Well, you can't see my mouse on here. Can you? No. Anyway, it's an un... You can't get into it because it's like impervious. So you put anything in there, as long as you don't know where the Harlequin Quest key is, then you can't get in there. Another one, like the one next to it, is the Snowflake key. It makes you put it in the snow globe, and it makes a portal, like a um, a pocket dimension of the house inside the snow globe. So you can like trap demons there, trap people there. Like the guy almost froze to death because he got locked out. Uh, from the top, you got the well key. I don't really know what that does. Something to do with the well. You got the head key, which is like you can unlock yourself. I think you use it in the back of your head, right? And you can go into your own memories. Give yourself therapy if you want to. You can like take your memories that you don't want to remember. Kind of hide them away. Or just get them out of there. Out of your head. But it's like, it's weird because it makes a door to your head. So it's like, it makes a copy of your consciousness. So if you use it on somebody that's like unconscious or asleep, instead of like questioning them and like finding out what they know, if you want to like find out what somebody knows, you can just go into their memories and just find out by looking at stuff. Because all your memories are tied to objects that are in the rooms. And everybody has their own headspace. It's all designed based on their personality. Like how fucked up is that? That's just one key and it's got all these crazy attributes to it. Uh, the one to the right of that, I don't know what that one is. And then the one to the, the fourth one there on the top row is the uh, the anywhere key. So it like you use it in any door, it unlocks any door, and then you think of another door, and it'll go, it'll take teleport you to that door. But then in the last episode, the bad guys got it, and they used it to just go into the middle of the woods where there's not a door. So I think they might have fucked up there. Uh. So the next one is the Omega Key, which opens the door where all the metal bullets come out of this portal that they used to smelt down and make new keys. And the next one is a key that they made using one of those smelted bullets that like kills demons or something, I think. And then the question mark, I don't know what that one is. I think the next one gives you wings. Uh, the time key is the one next to the last. Uh, where's the flame key? I guess the one to the right is the flame key. I don't look like the flame key, though. But see, the one at the very bottom, that big giant one, I don't know what that fucking even is. That's massive. So I don't know if this is like stuff people recreated from the comic books because it's not in the TV show yet. All of those on the very bottom, I don't know. And all the ones on the next to the very bottom. Uh, there's the chain key and the music box key. And then, oh wait, that's a chain key too. Oh, the one is the, for the, like, they got this, uh, this cubby box, or whatever, you put stuff in it and it repairs it. So, if you fuck something up, see, that's how it's so cool. Like, the way you can make stories out of, like, oh, you destroyed something, well, you can bring it back to life with this. Or the character, the bad guy from the first two seasons, Dodge. She was like always like transforming into people and using the anywhere key to go everywhere and she like they, she was pretty much unstoppable. They finally killed her, and then he discovers this time travel key, and he goes back in time and she like grabs hold of him and she like transports forward in time with him. So I don't know if she's just gonna be back now because they got a new bad guy. So now they like, got two bad guys to deal with. Plus these other kind of like demons that are like trapped in the snow globe or, or the the mirror. There's a mirror key. I don't know which one that one is. There's like this Titan belt that they can wear and it gives them super strength. Like think of what all you could do. There's a plant key that you can stick it in and stuff and you can make whatever plant you can imagine grow out of it. And there's a beast key which lets you turn into any kind of animal I think. So it's like you can keep mixing different keys together 
and you could keep losing them to bad guys, and the bad guys can like try to counteract your keys. It's like fucking One Piece, dude. It's like having devil's fruit powers. It's like so infinite possibilities. Lock and key is, is fucking amazing. But if you try to make like a new universe that had kind of rules like this, you know you're going to have like an animal one and a go anywhere one, a teleporty thing and a time travely thing. So it's like you're going to have to copy it if you try to like make your own story. Still, fucking badass. Just to, as a concept for like literary make it stuff. Um, so if you go to my... Uh, want to read books. I was trying to find that Joel Abernathy thing. Um, I can show you some more sets that I don't really know that much about. The Jade War, uh, Jade City. This is like the Green Bone Saga set. Let me read you what it's about. See if you might be interested in some of this. Uh, there's a crime syndicate in a world that produces rare magical jade, which grants those with the right training and heritage superhuman abilities. Oh, this is kind of like in a futuristic kind of a setting. Anyway, my mom ordered me the book too, I think. I don't think she got that right. My mom said she was going to buy me a bunch of books. She ordered me the whole, like, Expanse saga that I'm missing. And then she got me, um... Uh, which one was it? Not this one. This one's pretty popular. John Gwynn. Malice. Faithful and Fallen set. Um... Yeah, there's like all kinds of videos on these books if you want to like just look them up and see what they're about. Um, this seems pretty complicated. That's one everybody likes. Everybody likes, or I just saw these black guys. There's black guys. They're, they're booktubers. How crazy is that? <laughs> Unsold. They were talking about this series here. They made it sound like fucking Dragon Ball Z, dude. These are like... Less than 300 pages, too. Look, one thing I noticed about Brandon Sanderson and a lot of these guys that write fantasy, it's like they're all like six to 800 page books. And there's like 50 of them. And people are like, oh, yeah, I've read all those. <laughs> well, who's got the time? I mean, I can read a 300 page book in like a couple of days. So I guess an 800 page book. Like the Stephen King, The Stand, and It. Those like, took me a while. <laughs> but I don't know. Not that long. Maybe a week. But this is supposed to be like, it starts out a little bit slow, but then it gets crazy powerful, like the, whatever it's about, the guy gets super powered up, like Goku. Um, I really am interested in that now. There's this series here called the uh, Assassin Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb, everybody talks about. Um, I guess that sounds like Assassin's Creed, maybe. Um, they have virtues that they embody. That's what they're named after. He's got a link with animals. But he's like an assassin. Seems pretty dope. There was another one. I forgot what it was. about like ninjas or something. It was like a Japanese looking one. Oh, this one. Rage of the Dragons. The burning everybody talks about. Some people are born gifted. See, the thing about this is, some of these books, I don't know if you would call them young adult or just regular adult fiction, because a lot of this reminds me of the Divergent books, you know, the uh, Divergent and Allegiant and the other one, and I think back to that movie with that girl from Secret Life of the American Teenager and <laughs> that Maze Runner series, and uh, the young adult stuff makes me kind of... In fact, this is going to be kind of stupid if I read it. But then again, maybe the Allegiant books are good if you read them. Just maybe the movies were just shit. It's kind of like Hunger Games, but... Hunger Games was good. That's a young adult, right? This is supposed to be really good. What's this about? So you got these gifted, lucky people that are born with special abilities. One in every 2,000 women has the power to call down dragons. One in every 100 men is able to transform himself into a bigger, stronger, faster killing machine. Oh, so all the men are killing machines. Okay. I mean, everybody says this is really good. Plus, it looks cool on a shelf. 
There's another John Gwynn. Here's the look at these covers, dude. You got a hammer, you got a double axe, you got a spear. Fucking sick. Hunger of the Gods, that's the sequel to the Rage of Dragons, I think. <laughs> what else is on here? Terry Brooks. He's another one that writes a lot of these like fantasy books that I didn't know about. This one seems cool because it's like a, a modern day guy inherits a magical kingdom that's falling into ruin and he has to like turn it around and make it prosperous. He's like a guy in a suit. Kind of reminds me of The Magicians by Lee uh, Grossman. Six of Crows. I just like Crows so this set seems pretty cool. Um, a deadly heist to make him rich beyond all his dreams. And is it a fantasy universe? What else we got going on here? Um, I'm trying to find like the fantasy one. I got so many books that I want to read now. It's like insane. I got that whole Ian Banks set that uh, what you call it. Uh, recommended Elon Musk's wife. That's sci-fi though. See, I'm kind of wanting to get new bookshelves now. Because I want to have like a fantasy shelf and a sci-fi shelf and then a horror uh, mystery thriller shelf. And then I could put knickknacks on them, right? I could have my whole Dresden Files on the shelf and I have like a little skull because in the Dresden Files there's a ghost inside of a skull. And I can all have it like relate to the set. I could have like dragons on like the fantasy shelf. I could have like Halloween shit on the, the horror shelf. But then where am I going to put on like my popular fiction and my non-fiction? Like uh, Michael Crichton. Jurassic Park. Where would that fit in? I don't know. Popular fiction, I guess. Uh, what was it? There's like a lot of these. Yeah, I can't remember like all the other ones. Yeah, John Grisham and shit. That's like popular fiction. That's not even. A lot of these booktubers though, they all are into like one thing or another. None of them read. Like a lot of them, they will read Stephen King, but they won't read like um, Grisham or weird like Jim Butcher. I think he did. He did read Jim Butcher, that Brian Green guy, or Daniel Green, whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna be so pissed if you ever watch this video. This guy better fucking get my name right. Thomas Harris, like, you don't hear any of the booktubers talk about, like, reading the uh, Sons of the Lamps books. A lot of them do read James Corey, though, and that's science fiction. Even if they're a fantasy guy, he's, like, that popular, I feel like. Yeah, so. What do you guys think about this? I've been reading Catch-22, by the way, and not really impressed with it. I think the movie's going to be way better. It's really, he repeats himself a lot. Like, the, the dialogue. They'll be like, one guy will say something, another guy will say the same fucking thing in a question. There's a guy named Major, 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 Major. Because his middle name and his last name is Major, and his first name is Major, and his rank is Major. And it just goes on and on and on, saying Major a bunch of times, because it's like... It's like, you know how there's dad jokes? It's like grandpa jokes. It's like 50s and 60s humor. It kind of gets tedious. Yeah, there was a bunch more. I'm, I'm still like researching some of this stuff, but I'm going to find those fucking ninja books. <laughs> I'm going to add them to the list. I'm going to have like 300. I've got like 291 that I want to read. I'm going to get up to 300 and then maybe I'll stop. <laughs> 